Hello and welcome to Mind of Steel. This is the weekly show all about Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. There are some amongst us who believe that Mark Steele is a whistleblower, a weapons expert, and a revealer of great and frightening truths about a deadly conspiracy to decimate the human population. And amongst those people, amongst those true believers, are individuals prepared to walk the path of the believer all the way to wherever it leads. But unfortunately for those people, where the path usually leads is a mental health care facility and long periods of incarceration. And let's meet one of those true believers. This gentleman is Daniel Turfley. And as you can see, he has some very useful tips to give us to protect ourselves from 5G radiation. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Dan from Being Iowee. I hope you're all good. Now, this video is an information video. The information is about how to protect from radiation and some ideas and tips. First part is the hat that I wear. Not new, not different, just the hat. So, you need to get yourself some material. This material protects from radiation frequencies. Okay, remember three steps ahead, everybody. Three steps ahead. In honour of Daniel Turfley, I've constructed my own tinfoil hat. I don't have any headgear as fashionable or dignified as the one that Daniel is wearing, but I hope this will suffice. And as you can see, I've lined it with a layer of kitchen foil, which I hope will be sufficient to keep back those frequencies that Daniel is so concerned about. Now that I've got my fully protective headgear on, let's join Daniel on an urban safari as he surveys the dangers that might be afflicting his small town in North Yorkshire. Hello there guys, so this is my street where I live, we've got a big, we've got one of these stupid ass things here, and look at this tree. I'm going to show you this tree close up. Right, you ready? Watch, 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 all the way up to it, radiation poisoning, all the way up to the top, because it's absorbing radiation. Oh look at it, it's falling apart. Biologists have pondered for many thousands of years, why it is that deciduous trees lose their leaves every year in winter. Months ago, that tree was blossoming with life. Its branches were verdant, covered with leaves. And today, look at it. It's a shambles. It's a wreck. It's a pale shadow of a tree, lacking that most essential component of a tree, the leaf. And what could be the cause? Well, Daniel has correctly, clearly asserted that the reason why those trees are bare of branch could only be the nearby lamppost. It makes perfect sense to me and every other open-minded Save Us Now law enforcement officer. They all believe this. There's one over there. See, I've got one here where my house is and then I've got one right at the back of me. So I'm, I'm basically sandwiched between two of them, see? Daniel is doing a criminal injustice to the word sandwiched. What he means here is that there are lamp posts near to where he lives. Uh, and given that he lives in a town or a city, that's hardly surprising because lamp posts are a very common bit of street infrastructure. But why is he concerned about lamp posts? It, it's another bizarre thing that he's got from Mark Steele. If you wind back all the way to episode four of this series, you will see that Mark Steele believes that the circuitry inside lamp posts are not there to switch on and off those lights. Mark believes that they are part of a 5G energy weapons kill grid. And because Daniel Turfley is an ignoramus who knows almost nothing about electronics, his entire source of information concerning this matter is Mark Steele. One there, weapon. One there, weapon. You can tell that Daniel Turfley is lifting this nonsense entirely from Mark Steele. This is a Mark Steele claim that Daniel Turfley is parroting, repeating, without really understanding at all. Well, I mean, any less than Mark Steele understands it, because Mark Steele truly doesn't understand what he's talking about. Mark Steele claims to be a former Ministry of Defence weapons expert. We know that he never worked for the Ministry of Defence, because we know that he had a criminal record from fairly early on in his life, where he worked as a fitter, an unskilled labourer, 
in a factory. And we know that after he had a criminal record, after he served two years of a six-year sentence for shooting a teenage girl in the face, it'd be very, very unlikely that the Ministry of Defence would hire him to work on sensitive weapon systems. That's just not the way the Ministry of Defence select their prime candidates for scientific research programmes. Alright, there's a police officer here, so I'm going to go outside now and give him a letter real quick. Hey, buddy. I wonder if you know. Well, I actually want to report a crime, but they are, I keep getting told by police to re ring 101. But seeing as you sat there, yeah? Do you know much about these lights? Do you know that it's called 5G? This is something that all true followers of Mark Steele feel compelled to do. They make entirely bogus reports of entirely imaginary criminal activities to the authority figures. We saw Modern Day Jester do precisely this a few weeks ago when he reported a, a bunch of imaginary crimes to St Albans Council and then complained bitterly to the local police officers when the council didn't take him seriously. And now we see Daniel Turfley doing the precise same thing. I, I feel sorry for the police officer who is on the receiving end of Daniel Turfley's mystical nonsense. Work. These have been deemed illegal. See that tree? That's radiation poisoning that, because to kick off a lot of radiation, it's proven in court and everything, yeah? It's all proven. We've just won his first court case actually against the government, shall we say. Mark Steele often loves to boast that he won a court case against Gateshead Council and that he was vindicated. He fails to mention that he actually lost the only court case. Mark Steele was found guilty of harassing councillors from Gateshead Council. He was convicted and ordered to pay a fine. And he was also ordered to leave those councillors alone, to not hassle them anymore, which as far as I'm aware, he has fully complied with. But that doesn't stop Mark Steele lying about what the outcome of the court case was. Mark Steele hasn't ever won anything. There has been no court case that ever ruled that 5G was illegal. In fact, there was a court case which concluded at the beginning of 2023. That was a court case started by Legal Action Against 5G, an organisation run by numbskulls with more money than sense. And they also lost. 5G has been litigated a number of times and in every single time has shown to be completely legal. Um, so basically, these are illegal, there's no insurance for them. This is another conspiracy theory lifted entirely from the mind of Mark Steele. It has its origin in a statement written by Lloyds of London about a decade ago, stating that they weren't at that time offering reinsurance for 5G telecommunication systems. And, and that was because at the time they were very new. And it usually takes a while for an insurance market for new technologies to be developed. That's no longer the case. Lloyds of London does insure all kinds of telecommunications equipment, including 5G telephone masts. But Mark misunderstands a lot of things. He's not an expert in telecommunications. He doesn't know the first thing about lamppost control systems. And he certainly does not know how insurance markets work. The fact that a particular insurance marketplace might not have been offering reinsurance for a particular risk doesn't mean that no public liability insurance existed for that risk. It just meant that that particular risk was not being traded on one particular insurance market. Mark has taken a thing that he misunderstood, amplified it into something that it didn't mean, and then repeated it in a way that credulous nitwits like Daniel Turfley can now repeat and repackage in handy bite-sized chunks in order to harass public officials like the poor police officer who is now receiving a stream of nonsense from an idiot. Right, so me telling you, now I've told you, and if you do nothing about it, you yourself, plus others that I've told, can get up to 14 years in prison. You might not believe me, you might laugh. If you want to seek paperwork... Being a member of Mark Steele's Save Us Now organisation means, at heart, you have to be a magical thinker. You, you have to believe that your words are so persuasive, so true, and that the reason why nobody believes you has nothing to do with the fact that you're an outcast or an idiot or smell unpleasant or, or have any number of social faults that mean that regular people don't want to have anything to do with you. No, 
It's all because of a conspiracy. The reason why nobody wants to believe what Daniel Turfley is saying is because we're all in on some kind of vast criminal conspiracy and even the Bobby on the beat needs to be threatened with incarceration for not believing in what a Savers Now law enforcement officer believes. That is the kind of nonsense you have to believe if you're a member of Mark Steele's Save Us Now. It's the fact that you might not know about it, you might not get it. If you want to find out about it and see the legal documentation, you can find it and you've gone www.saveusnow.org.uk and you'll find it all on there. Someone called Anthony Steele is doing his damned hardest to try and help us to get this crap out of his community. Daniel Turfley the true follower of Mark Steele. And in a sense, he represents every follower of Mark Steele. Because if you are somebody who believes in Mark Steele, then you are more ridiculous than me wearing this hat. I'm sure you guessed that this video was recorded at the height of the pandemic, about two years ago. And we haven't heard much from Daniel Turfley since, which is probably because my sources have suggested that shortly after this video was recorded, he was carted off to the local mental health facility where he was invited to make an extended stay for the period of his rehabilitation. And I hope he's doing well. And I hope he feels he no longer needs the tinfoil hat. I, for one, was very glad to take it off. It was an uncomfortable piece of headgear that didn't do me any good. In fact, it made me look completely ridiculous but not as ridiculous as being a member of the Save Us Now political organization, not as ridiculous, as absurd as being connected to Mark Steele, which is why I'm dedicating the outro of this episode to one individual. It's to a person who is much younger than Mark and often helps Mark Steele with a number of important tasks. He's the person who curates some of the content on Mark Steele's Telegram channel, and he's also helped Mark by driving him to a number of Mark's speaking engagements. But I'd like to invite this individual, who prides himself in his self-sufficiency, to metaphorically take off the tinfoil hat. If you believe that you are a self-sufficient rugged individual, why not discard the one thing that makes you look absurd, which is your connection to Britain's most ridiculous conspiracy theorist. And I know this person knows who I am. I know he watches this show because I've seen him post about me recently on Telegram. I'm not going to mention your name. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I want you to feel the same sense of relief that I did when I took off that hat. You can feel it too. And for the rest of you who aren't acolytes of Mark Steele, I can promise you no more tinfoil hats, but plenty more absurdity in next week's episode of Mind of Steel, because there's going to be one, as sure as there are crazy followers willing to repeat Mark Steele's absurd words. I shall be following them up. I shall be reporting on those crazy people and placing them before your eyes for your charming delectation. See you in a week.